You are now listening to the Visit El Paso podcast, official podcast of Destination El Paso. I'm your host, Christy Couture, and this is Episode 8 for January 2014. Happy New Year and welcome to the Visit El Paso podcast. Coming up on this episode, the El Paso Puzzler Endurance Mountain Bike Race, the Michelob Ultra El Paso Marathon, can't miss January events, and music from Liger. It's been a busy start of the new year for El Paso and we ended 2013 with a bang when UCLA and Virginia Tech came to the Sun City for the Sun Bowl. And since the beginning of this new year, new events and things to do have been popping up all over town. And that's the aim of this show. Whether you're coming into El Paso to visit family or on business, you can always listen to our podcast if you're looking for inspiration for things to do in town. One of our fan favorites is our weekly blog installation, The Last Minute Local. We publish it every single weekend on our website, visitalpaso.com. Just go to our blog section and read the latest entry. We break it down for you every weekend with low cost or free things to do. You can always reach out to us on social media, whether on Twitter at Visit El Paso TX or on Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, Foursquare, Pinterest, and more. Let's go ahead and start out 2014 with two interviews. First up, we'll be with Brent Sanders, one of the organizers for the Puzzler Mountain Bike Endurance Race, which has gotten the well-deserved rep of being the toughest mountain bike race in Texas. Do you think you've got what it takes? The El Paso Puzzler Endurance Bike Race is in its eighth year. Mm -hmm. It got started in 2006, and Mm -hmm. David Wilson and myself, we got together, and David kind of had a a route already picked out, Mm -hmm. and we rode it around the mountain and immediately realized that we both uh, shared the same dream of bringing this endurance bike race to El Paso. That first year we had about 25 people lined up at the start line. It, or we thought that this was just going to be so extreme for people. We were even surprised that first year to get 25 people. It's grown tremendously. We have about 200 people that show up now. And we just really have uh, been excited to see people pushing themselves and you know, really trying something that maybe a few years ago they thought they could never do. And in 2007, I guess, uh, we had DJ Singh join us. The three of us for the last few years, and this year it's uh, DJ and myself are have kind of taken over. So we like to think of ourselves as being the toughest bike race in the state of Texas. And wow. if you ask our participants... We rarely get anyone who disagrees with us. So that's, that's kind of what the puzzler is. It's a, it's just a bike race and it goes over beautiful desert terrain. It's mostly single track trail and it just forces people to really just push themselves probably farther than they think they could. Uh, 200 people for a single track, uh, race like that seems you know, pretty big. How were the trails and the distances for each uh, type of race portion determined? We have three different distances that Mm -hmm. um, racers can participate in. And it is a 14-mile, 36-mile, and then the 50-mile race. And we, you know, for the first few years, we had only the 50-mile race. And and we thought it would be beneficial to have maybe somebody who wasn't ready for the 50 miles but still wanted to come out and participate and maybe try out a a shorter distance so that then they could realize what our race was and what our trails were. And we hope that they have that 50 mile as their goal because we still like to think of ourselves as the 50 mile race, but we have these other aspects of the race in hopes of drawing those people eventually into the 50 mile race. And so that's really why we chose those different distances, because even our 14-mile distance is still, for most uh, riders, it's still a very long distance. So no matter which distance you choose, 
you're going to be challenged. And the terrain here in El Paso is very, very technical. And um, there's a lot of climbing, and we got a lot of rocks and cactus on the sides of our trail. So there's no easy landing around here. You've got to get on your bike. It's not a race that you can start preparing for a few weeks before. It's mm-hmm. it's a few months of at least of preparation, and you've got to you've got to be in in. You know, you, you've got to be in shape and you've got to be mentally ready and, and, and physically ready, of course, for mm-hmm. this race. You, some of the things that kind of catch our participants off guard is is our terrain. And, you know, we live in Texas, but they don't realize that we actually have real mountains here in El Paso. And so no matter how much we try to warn people from um, from even New Mexico and Colorado, but especially from the rest of Texas, that you're going to be doing a lot of climbing and, and you're, you know, we're at some altitude here. It seems like until they get here, they just kind of blow us off. So, um, you know, our race starts at about 4,000 feet above sea level, and it goes up to about 6,000 feet. At its highest point, we have 6,000 feet of climbing. If you do the 50 mile, I'm referring to the 50 mile portion. Um, it's, mm-hmm. you know, about over 6,000 feet of climbing is involved. And again, it's, it, there's a lot of technical terrain. It's, it's a slow grind. Um, our winner last year did it in just under four and a half hours. And he is, very impressive. I just every time he's he's won it three years in a row, and I just can't believe that he can ride it that fast for a a really I would say for a, a somebody who's really well prepared and and a great mountain bike rider. Six hours is you know probably a good time to do this race in. And you know of course, like I said, the pros come down and blow that time away, but. For the average good mountain biker, it's it's a six-hour ride. I think anybody that would participate would come out maybe pretty sore after all of that. <laughs> yeah, and and we like to present it not as a sore race, but as a challenge, and you know, for people to challenge themselves. And 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 when people are finished with this race, they've achieved something. And and yeah, that's definitely. what we that's what we want to promote, and that's what we want. You know, we want to give them that feeling of a great achievement because it is. No matter which category you enter, it's it's a great achievement to complete this race. Definitely. Well, the Puzzler sounds like a phenomenal race. When is the deadline uh, for registration? So online registration closes on the sixteenth of January. Mm-hmm. And if you can't re- and and on the 60 up until that point it's going to be $65 for the 50 mile race and the 14 and 36 mile race are $55. Um and all participants get a t-shirt. Um they get free food at the venue. Um we we're trying to, you know, kind of make it more family oriented. We have a jumping balloon. We have kids activity or, or a face painting that we're going to have for kids there. Um, so we really want people to come out, but also to bring their families out. And so, you know, that's when all the online registration closes. And then if you can't register by then, it, you can register on the 18th, so the day before. But mm-hmm. we bump up the, the fee quite a bit. It goes up to $80 for the 50 mile or $70 for the um, 14 and 35 mile race. And um, wow. it's, I think we want people to bring their families there. The 50 mile racers, they come through the venue three times. So it's always anybody who's ever participated in a race, it's always fun to see. It gives you that little boost of energy. Uh, that you find that you didn't think you had anymore whenever you come through the venue and people are cheering you on and you see your loved ones there. So, so, you know, we'd like for the, we'd like for family and friends to stick around the venue. But you can imagine people who are out there for six, seven hours, that's a lot of waiting around. But they come through that venue three times, or, you know, the start finish and then two additional times as well. So they'll get a chance to see their, their friends and family, uh, either riding or cheering them on. True. Well, thank you very much, Frank, for talking to us about the Puzzler Endurance by Grace. 
And we're looking forward to the event on January 19th. It's out by Bowen Ranch. Yes, ma'am. It's farthest north east of town that you can get on the, you know, going uh, out um, on the northeast side of the mountains. And, uh, yeah, it's it's just a beautiful venue. You're just a few miles from the city, and you feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. It's just such a beautiful spot. We're really lucky to have it here in El Paso, and we're, we're lucky to have the Franklin Mountains as our as our host for this event and, and to showcase what we like to consider to be the most beautiful part of our city. So like Brent said, the Puzzler Mountain Bike Endurance Race is this upcoming Sunday, January the 19th, out by Bowen Ranch in Northeast El Paso. You can get more information about the race by going to puzzlerendurance.wordpress.com. Now, if you're not attending this year, make it a resolution to train for the next one. They don't call it the toughest race in Texas for nothing. Our next call is with Mike Coulter, race director for the Michelob Ultra El Paso Marathon, taking place on February 23rd. Now, what's cool about this event is that you may still have some time to train for it. And even if you're not a devout runner, there's still ways to get out, get fit, and have fun on race day. Now, this year's marathon is going to be held on February the 23rd, and a lot is going on that day. Can you tell us a little more about the different routes and activities planned for that day? Sure. Um, we've got three different distances that are that take place on, on marathon day, and that would be the full marathon, the half marathon, and the 5K race. The um, 5K and a half marathon race both start down in downtown El Paso in the Union Plaza district. Uh, the half marathon makes its way up into the Austin Terrace neighborhood, uh, just a little short of the Pershing Gate of the, at, at Fort Bliss, and then returns back downtown. The 5K race itself actually just runs completely in downtown El Paso, uh, finishing there again in the Union Plaza district. The full marathon actually starts at the top of Trans Mountain Road, at an elevation of like 5,200 feet, and mm -hmm. then finishes downtown in the Union Plaza District. Same finish line for everybody, um, at an elevation of about 3,200 feet. Wow, um, that is about, a long run. <laughs> yeah, well, it's 26.2 miles, and uh, we've seen some markedly faster times since we painted the course. And about how many people participate in each route? Well, what we're well, we're anticipating a total of, of 3,000 people between the three events. We're mm -hmm. hoping to get 500 people for the full marathon, uh, mm -hmm. another 1,700 for the half, and then the remainder in the 5K. Very nice. And how long has the uh, Paso Marathon been going on for now? Well, we're going into our seventh year. We're here to stay. Definitely. Now, another major aspect of the Nicolob Ultra El Paso Marathon is the Expo here at the Convention Center. Uh, can you correct. tell me a little bit more about what goes into organizing that and what kind mm -hmm. of vendors you look for? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, it, that takes place on, on Saturday the 22nd, and we open our doors at, I believe, 8 o'clock in the morning, and it runs all the way to 6.30. All of our participants are required to go by there to pick up their race number, their timing chip, their event T-shirt, and, uh, and a goodie bag. In addition to that, we will have in the neighborhood of 30 different vendors represented. Of course, some of them are our sponsors, but we also have people that, that um, you know, we've got all the latest sports gear available to people. We've got representatives from other events, from the, particularly the Wattis Marathon will be there. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have a cycling shop. We've got um, crafts people. There are uh, – just a variety of different things, particularly kind of slanted to the to the person that that may not be from El Paso, mm -hmm. because we do mm -hmm. get we a lot of our participation comes from out of town. So that's a great thing for El Paso. <laughs> uh, we think so. That's why we keep doing it. Now, what can people do to prepare for race day? I know I saw a photo floating around about some sort of training program. Is that still available? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can give some people direction. If they want more information, they just contact us at El info at elpasomarathon.org if they want to get some really specific information on how to train. But generally, you want to give yourself for a full marathon 
uh, in a neighborhood of 16 weeks to, to get into a program that, that builds you up to the point where you're ready for that distance. Um, the shorter distances, the, the 5K and the half marathon, may not take 16 weeks, but it's a really good idea to, to get hold of a program that, that gets you on track and then make, that ensures that you have the, the proper mileage, you know, to tackle the, the distance on race day. Um, but again, if people want to, you know, get hold of a specific day by day, week by week program, they can contact us at info at elpasomarathon.org and we'll send that to them. Very nice. Okay. And when is the last day for registration? Actually, we take registration all the way up to the day before the event. Our online registration will close um, two days prior to the event, but you can actually register in person at the expo. And what kind of weather do you think we should be expecting for that day? I know it starts to get a little bit warmer. I know January is really cold, but once you get into yeah. February about, you know, how many layers of clothing should somebody bring with them? Uh, well, typically – Typically in February, and this applies especially to the full marathoners because it's always a little bit breezy and chilly mm-hmm. at the top of Trans Mountain. But yeah. typically in February, you're going to see a start temperature, you know, in the mid 30s, mm-hmm. and, and and by the time you get to the finish line, um, the temperature is going to be in the 60s. So mm-hmm. it's really ideal marathon type weather. Um, we suggest that that. You know, a long sleeve tech, technical material type top is, is a, is a, is a great way to go with gloves, uh, gloves that you might, you might want to, you might even shed before you get to the, to the, to the finish line. Um, some people prefer to keep their, their legs wrapped, you know, the entire way. And that's understandable, but I've got pictures of people in shorts and short sleeve shirts the entire way. Um, it's just, again, you know, what your personal preference is, and that's kind of the temperature guide. It's going to start in the 30s, and we'll, we'll finish out in the 60s. So just that's dress accordingly. Good. And we give, we give participants the opportunity to, to shed at the, at, at the start. You know, we've got a clothing drop area where all of their, their jackets and their extra caps and stuff like that that they've used to, to travel to the event and then uh, wear right up to the start time. They, they can actually stow that material and it'll be secure. So that applies to all the events. So, um, again, once you get moving, it's plenty warm. Nice. Very well. Well, again, Mike, thank you so much for chatting with us this evening to tell us about the EP Marathon. We hope to see you on race day. Great. I hope so. Thank you. Remember, race day is on February the 23rd, and the Expo and Packet Pickup is the day before at our convention center venue in the heart of downtown El Paso. As Mike mentioned, there are three different race distances, the marathon, half marathon, and 5K run walk, so make sure to register now at alpasomarathon.org before it's too late. I also wanted to take a moment to encourage you to join the El Paso It's All Good movement by signing up at It's All Good EP with your Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn accounts to help us spread digital goodwill about the Sun City. When you join at itsallgoodep.com, you can earn points by using the It's All Good EP hashtag on Twitter or Instagram and sharing the good stories that we send you every month across all of your networks. Since December, our digital ambassadors have shared stories like El Paso being named one of the most resilient cities in the world by the Rockefeller Foundation. Sports Illustrated listing our annual Sun Bowl game as a top 10 bowl game to watch. And One Square Mile, Texas, filming a very special documentary in El Paso that gives a unique look at one of the oldest neighborhoods in our city, Segundo Barrio. But remember, the El Paso It's All Good movement isn't just about social media. It's also a state of mind, a message about all the positive things that we can get excited about in our community. It's not meant to be a brand or a tagline, but it is up to you to help us spread the message about all the good things that El Paso has to offer. You are now listening to the official Visit El Paso podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Visit El Paso TX.
Check us out online, www.visitelpaso.com. If you're planning on redecorating or remodeling your home this year, the El Paso Spring Home Show is definitely a can't miss. The show is on January 24th through the 26th at our convention center. In addition to all the cool gadgets and housewares, you can also bring up to two antique items to get appraised for free. And if that's not enough, HDTV Design Star winner Jennifer Bertrand will be making a special appearance on Saturday the 25th. Tickets can be purchased at the box office and are $5.95 for adults, $4.95 for seniors and military, and kids 12 and under are absolutely free. The El Paso Pro Musica Chamber Music Festival kicked off on January the 9th and continues till February the 4th with performances scheduled just about every single day. Tickets for most shows are about $25, but if you can get to the El Paso Art Museum early enough, you can catch a free concert on January 23rd and the 30th at noontime. A full listing of concerts are available online at elpasopromusica.org. The El Paso Downtown Art and Farmer's Market continues each and every Saturday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Anthony Street in Union Plaza, located in downtown El Paso. The Farmer's Market features arts, crafts, and fresh food from our region, so if you're trying to get healthy in 2014, this is definitely for you. If you're looking for more options, the Art of Inos Farmer's Market is also open on Saturdays, and they're located in Sunland Park, New Mexico, just 10 minutes away from downtown El Paso. They're open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now, these are just a few of the can't-miss events for the month, but there are dozens more going on in El Paso this month, so make sure to stop by any of our visitor information centers in downtown El Paso, Fort Bliss, or the El Paso International Airport. We've got a really special pop-up gallery at our downtown visitor center right now. Art made by El Paso Zoo animals, so check it out. Also, make sure to log on to visitelpaso.com and browse through our blog, itineraries, listings, and master calendar. There's always something to do in the Sun City, and now, more than ever, it's all good. Now, before we end the show, please take a moment to subscribe to the Visit El Paso podcast on the show aggregator of your choice. This is the best time to subscribe. In the upcoming months, we'll be unveiling some cool new episodes focusing on El Paso history and heritage, Music Monday mixtapes, and maybe a walking tour of the city or two. In every episode, I spotlight some local music for you to discover. And this month, the featured band is electronic rock group Liger. You can check out more of their music online by going to electricsocialrecords.com. Now, the name of this song is Game. Let us know what you think. Till next time, enjoy.